Hello, this is Mr. Zamoyski, chemistry teacher at North Tonawanda High School, and this is the pre-lab for the first quarter lab titled Mass and Volume. Previously in lab and in class we've looked at mass, which is the amount of stuff inside of something, and volume, which is the amount of space that that stuff takes up. What we'll do now is we'll look at mass and volume together, and we're going to do that using two common metals. We're going to be using copper and tin. And you can look at the SDS for each of these as part of your pre-lab assignment, um, but you'll see that they are relatively safe to use. So let's take a look at the lab. In this mass and volume lab, we're going to use equipment that we've used before. To measure mass, we're going to use our pocket digital scale. And to measure volume, we're going to use our graduated cylinder. Now, as we said before, the copper and the tin um, don't really possess any hazard, um, but we're, we're still going to wear goggles um, because we are working with uh, glassware with our graduated cylinder. Um, to do this lab, the lab itself is really simple and straightforward. Um, the complexity and the challenge for this will be in doing the analysis of the data. So I have this table set up that's going to be um, in your data sheet inside your lab packet. And what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, some simple measurements. We're going to record the mass of the copper and the tin separately. Then we're going to put them inside the graduated cylinder and measure them by volume displacement. Um, and we'll get the volume of each of those, and then we'll repeat this a bunch of times. So let's start doing this. Step one is you'll take your graduated cylinder over to your sink and fill it up with water. When you fill up your graduated cylinder, you don't want it to be completely full because you want to be able to measure the volume change below 100 milliliters, um, but you don't want it to be um, not full enough. You want it to be taller than the height of a copper bar here. The copper bars tend to be taller, um, but you want both metals to be completely submerged in the water. So this is a good amount of water. And if we look at my starting volume, we're gonna record that for both of our measurements. And it looks like we're at about 74, Actually, 73.9, I'll call that. Uh, remember that we're reading the bottom of the curved line, which is our meniscus, uh, to get an accurate volume reading. Next, what I'm going to do is measure the mass of one of the metals. I'm going to pick copper to start. And when you start off, you want to make sure that your scale is reading 0, 0 for the mass. If not, press the tear button um, until it reads 0, 0. Then what you'll do is you'll put one piece of copper on the balance, or on the scale, and it reads 12.1 grams, so I'm going to record that mass down on my data table. Next that I've recorded the mass of the copper and the initial volume of my water, I'm going to put this piece of copper in the graduated cylinder. And now I'm going to read the new volume that's given here, which looks like it's at... Uh, let's go with, let's say 74.5 for that. So we'll record that volume on our data table. In our data table, we recorded the mass of the copper bar, 12.1 grams, the initial volume in the graduated cylinder before we put the copper in, the final volume after we put the copper in the graduated cylinder, and now what we'll do is calculate the volume of the copper, which is the difference between the two water volumes. So 74.5 minus 73.9 is going to give us 0.6 milliliters. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for tin now. A note about getting the metal out of your graduated cylinder. The best way I found is just pour the graduated cylinder into your hand and catch the copper before it falls into the sink. And then you'll have to refill your graduated cylinder, which I'll do right now for the tin. Remember that you want the volume to be high enough that it'll submerge the metal completely, but not too high 
that you won't notice a change in volume because it'll be above the 100 milliliter mark. We'll record the mass of the tin, putting it on our electronic scale, 7.5 grams. We'll also record the initial volume of our graduated cylinder. Looks like we're at 89.6. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'll put the tin in the graduated cylinder and we'll record the new volume. Looks like 91.2. Let's record all those values. We've recorded all the values. For the tin, we had our mass of 7.5 grams. Our volume before we put the tin in the graduated cylinder at 89.6 milliliters. The volume in the graduated cylinder after we put the tin in. So the difference between these two volumes is the volume of the tin. So 90.2 milliliters minus 89.6 milliliters will give us point six milliliters again. And now you've completed one trial of the lab. Now that you've completed one trial where you've measured the mass and volume of one bar of copper and the mass and volume of one bar of tin, you can move on to the next part, which involves the same exact process measuring mass and volume, but this time you're going to use multiple bars. You can use as many or as few as you want, you just need to have a distinctly different mass and volume of copper and a distinctly different mass and volume of tin. And you're going to do this until you get a nice set of data, three to five trials. Now that you've completed all of your measurements for the mass and volume of copper and the mass and volume of tin, you're going to end up plotting your data on a sheet of graph paper. We're going to use what's called a scatter plot, where you take data points from each of the measurements you took and graph them together. On our horizontal axis here, we're going to consider what our independent variable is, or what we decided before the experiment to use as our thing that we were changing. Uh, in this case, this was the number of bars of each metal, and we could say that the difference between all the bars is how much space they took up. So as a result, we're going to put volume on our horizontal axis to act as our independent variable. Remember to include units for all of your results here. Um, next, what you'll have is what we measured that was dependent on the amount of bars we had, which is our mass. That's our dependent variable, and that's going to end up on our vertical axis or the y-axis. After setting an appropriate scale where everything is nice and evenly spaced out, what you'll end up doing is plotting your data points. Because you have two different sets of data, you want to make sure that your data points look different for each of the two metals you used so that you don't confuse your data points. So those would be, would, are an example of data points for copper. And for example, those are my data points for tin. Um, then what you'll do next is draw a best fit line uh, going through the origin where you want to try and fit a line through all of the points, at least as best as you can. You'll be much more precise with that since you'll be using a ruler and have the grid of your graph paper. Um, once you're done with that, you're going to take a look at these results, do some calculations, and you're going to spend your post lab figuring out the significance of these results here, what they mean, and how to use them for other applications. That's it for the pre lab for the mass and volume lab. Go ahead and read over the procedure, look over the SDS for copper and tin answer the pre-lab questions, and make sure you're properly dressed for this lab and you'll be ready to go. Have a good day.